Thank you very much, Vladimir. We call him Vlad at uh, uh, ADMI. And uh, Vlad is, uh, as we've heard, is a very, very, has a very, very rich background, a very, very checkered uh, career. He started off uh, in a third world country like Kenya. He just reminded me that. And uh, he's uh, worked for one of the best media uh, institutions in the world, the Bib. Those of us who went to the UK call it the Bib, and <laughs> you call it the BBC. And uh, he still works there, and you've heard uh, about his experience. So, Vlad, I mean, these are our parents. They are eagerly waiting to hear a lot of good things from uh, this uh, great mind. And uh, now that you've mentioned uh, something about AI and the future. But Vlad, just let's start from a point where you, you've worked for for BBC for, 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 for 10 years, and I'm sure 10 years for my students at ADMI, they'll tell you that's a long, long, long time. But you've worked there and you've garnered experience. Tell us how how that has been. Let's just start from there. Okay. Uh, how about you, I hope you're all okay. Hmm. Um, I just before I start on your question, Ari, I just want to pass the message that I would also like to hear from you and the questions that you might have. We can talk about AI or anything else that that you will that you will be thinking of that I hope you'll find useful. Um, I think it's really interesting in the last ten years how the media landscape have ch has changed, and and you can sort of you could probably do a, a sort of a, a poll with your with your children or your well not children anymore, but your the, the students at the institute. And I suppose if you ask them who is watching live TV every day, you probably are not going to get many hands raised. And 10 years ago, probably that would have been the case. I think probably most of us grew up in a generation where we wanted to be at home at 8 p.m. because it was a series that we really wanted to watch when we were kids. That obviously is not happening anymore. And that's a really good reflection of how the media landscape has changed. We want to watch or see or listen to things that are happening now. That's why news, for instance, you know, let's say the elections, man, the man are here in, in this part of town or something. You want to put the channel on, you want to watch it now um, or you want to listen to it on the radio. Or you want to read it on whatever platform you you want to read. Um, you want to watch a sports game. I'm an Arsenal fan. I always watch Arsenal live. Um, and it's a, sorry about that. But. Right. So like sports is a really good example. Even if you don't like sports, you can recognize the fact that we want to watch it live and now. And I use these as news and sports as two really good examples of that's where digital is. Um, you want to be able to have the immediacy of watching, reading, or listening to something that is of interest to you in a matter of seconds and not dependent on whether the radio station or the TV channel has decided that that's going to happen only on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And that is a big change. And that is where, where your students and our students are going right now. They are preparing themselves for the, not for the future, this is happening now, the present, of trying to be ready, active, and understanding how the market has changed. There is still, especially in this market, a lot of reliance on television and radio are very important. But by getting into, into the skills of digital, that will allow them that by the, by the time things change, the students will be ready. And, and the media landscape in the last 10 years has changed significantly in that way. 10 years ago, we probably didn't have you know, most of the, of the content that we see today on social media. Social media, we can spend a whole day talking about. And there is a lot of it which you can qualify as entertainment. A lot of it that you can say, this is something that helps me distract and get through the day, makes me laugh at, at all. But, but if you look at what audiences are doing, they're also getting their information there be that TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, whichever. People get informed that way. And not only by traditional media, like let's say the BBC or Citizen TV or whoever, they're getting information from what other people are saying. They're getting information from politicians. They're getting information from recognized uh, people who are in our society. So I hope I can, I, I have answered that question, Agri. This is kind of more or less how we have had to adapt in the media world on these significant changes as a result of the the the, the explosion of digital media. Thank you very much, Vlad. Uh, uh, very interesting. Uh, and I think uh, I pick it up from there. There's something uh, you've mentioned uh, around uh, uh, how that has translated into career. And I would love to hear you linking that to your career journey, which is, uh, as I said, is very interesting uh, uh, in the BBC. Mm. And, and I'm sure we have our bread and butter at, at ADMI 
has been for a long time been known to be film and TV. We are known for that. And uh, I'm sure parents here who are uh, who have their children uh, taking this course are seeing you and they're seeing yes, there's there's hope around that. So can you just mention ra- around that in careers towards such as uh, news or, 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 or career towards institutions like uh, Reuters, you're talking about AFP, you're talking about BBC. How, how does that work for in, in the future that you know and tie to your own career journey? So, for instance, um, when was this? In 2010, there was a football World Cup in South Africa. I was a reporter at the time. The majority of my work was to get people on air on radio. Now, if I were to do, propose that to my bosses today, they would probably tell me I need to go home because that's not exactly what we do. A lot of the people who come to our to our web to to us to consume news and find out what's going on will do it online. To give you an example, our our news website has um, what we call live pages, which are basically stories that get updated all the time. It's very similar to Twitter in a way, where you're just scrolling down all the time and just um, in, getting bullet points of information of, um, sorry, the microphone is playing up again. Um, there you go. Uh, so instead of us doing radio and TV, a lot of people are coming to our websites. And just to give you some figures, um, for instance, when the war in Ukraine started last year, a lot of people came to the BBC website and we we're talking about at least 120 million people around the world. It just gives you a, an idea of this is not just a few people who have access to Internet. This is sort of a widespread explosion of people around the world who are interested in going straight up to a, a website to get information rather than turning on the radio and hoping that the music will change and they would they will get news. This is the empowering sort of side and aspect of digital is that it's now for you to take control of when you want the information and not for you to wait for someone to decide when you get the information. And this is what students are now preparing themselves for. How do they participate in this where they are the, the actors who are driving when people uh, are able to see the content? So in my own sort of career journey, for instance, it is a really empowering sort of uh, aspect that you've gone from a place where you hope people will listen and watch you to you will do, you will do content that you know people will listen and watch because you have statistics that you can you can yourself find out and see how many people read or watched whatever content you have done and you can just see that on social media right now anything that someone does you can just click uh, uh, press a button click a link and you'll see all the statistics of who's reading or watching that right now that is a really empowering element that the students here in this institute for instance as an example are going to be learning and going to be developing in this world where the power is not just dependent on the tv station on the media operator it's really dependent on the person doing the content so there's still that feeling in 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 our part of the world and uh, again uh in kenya i've heard you say speak swahili uh, people say what to see wajinga People are, they, 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 have, they, are, they have come of age, they can, they, they can understand. And there, there are people who are very worried around the layoffs, big layoffs that are happening in our big media, media companies. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and we're just talking about the, the, our own environment where we see big media players. It's uh, about right sizing and downsizing every day. How does that ogre, well, in a future? that uh, we are facing and you see the beauty about about life is you have to live it with all these changes you have to live it and you have to 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 be there so what 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 are your views and how what would you advise our parents that uh, amidst all these uh, i would say chaos uh, quote unquote in the media space where everybody is thinking no uh, inward looking growth is not something people are talking about so I think that's a really interesting question because it also leads leads me back to the sort of that concept of power. I think one of the things that has changed is not changing now. That's I think this is the it's a, it's a present now. Um, one of the things that digital has done is that it's given individuals a lot of power to decide where next with their careers. Traditionally, in the media market, if you come to an institute like this. 15, 20 years ago, you were really dependent in in the student being hired by a company who is in the media sector, more or less. Right now, there is an element of power because of the digital aspect of it, which I'm going to try to explain, is that you come to the institute like ADMI, your student will learn a whole set of skills, 
but his market, his job market is not necessarily Citizen TV, KTN, or a media operator or nation. His market is that and beyond. And, and the power aspect of this is that these skills, I find, that empower people to be their own businessmen, businesswomen, entrepreneurs with the skills that they have. There is a huge job market, which is not only sort of um, located here in Kenya, where the person who learns the skill can become their own business. And that is such a different concept from what it used to be before, where you're depending on an employer to give your son or your daughter an opportunity. Right now, the person with the skills can become their own business and offer their services not only here in Kenya, now, as COVID-19 showed us all, now they can do this remotely. I'll give you an example. Last year, I was in Ukraine a few times because of my work. I had to go there a few times. And I met with a whole lot of people who were software developers working for companies in California. This was happening before the war. And it was extraordinary how there was a huge job market of Ukrainian young men and women who were talented in software development. And they were working with Silicon Valley, getting good salaries, not living in the US, living in their own country, but they had developed a skill that was appealing for a market very much abroad. And this is where I find, and I've spoken to, to Agri and other people in sort of senior management at ADMI, is that the skills being learned by students in this institute are really helpful, not only to work in the Kenyan market, but we need to be a little bit more ambitious. You can do remote working easily everywhere. And there are people here who are really skilled and talented and can absolutely thrive in a, in a market where, where remote working, where you, all you need to have is the infrastructure, which is a computer, the skills, the necessary softwares. And, and, and that is such a valuable thing. And if there's anything that you really take away from our conversation today, is that the world today in the digital market is really empowering. Your sons and daughters can learn skills that will give them the opportunity to either work for someone or be their own bosses. And that is such a powerful concept that you need to think about. And there are, there are courses here in ADMI like entrepreneurship and commercial sort of uh, development, which can help students. I think Chiku was talking earlier about uh, career placement. So there's quite a lot of things that can complement your son or your daughter's study in graphics design. But it's, it's, it, you, I, I would encourage you to think more broadly into they can become their own entrepreneurs. And that is such an important thing that you should take away today. We have students here who are taking sound. There are people who are doing uh, graphic design, film and TV, and all those other courses. And, and I'm sure in production, TV production, they, they all converge to create some of the best experiences people have ever watched on the, on the silver screen, I would say. So can, can you just bring that to life to, to our parents so that they can see that yes, as, as much as my son is doing sound equipment or, or sound engineering, this is very important to the final production of that great uh, uh, delivery in any media house. Yeah. So I think the important, uh, the important aspect to, to remind ourselves also is that digital can be very flashy and we can think of it as a TikTok video and we can see sort of young people looking at whatever platform they choose, Instagram, and thinking, oh, that's all very sort of cool and trendy. Um, but that all starts with really basic skills and film and TV production in a way, that's what it gives. It allows people to understand what video production is, to see what's the best use of visuals, to be able to edit those cool and trendy videos that will come in later, um, to understand how the sound fe feeds in into all of that. I mean, ultimately, we're in a world where this is scientifically sort of proven in, in many studies is that the attention span of anyone looking at their phone right now is about three seconds whilst your finger does this and the screen goes down. So you really got to be on top of your game to capture someone in those three seconds where someone looks at that video, someone looks at those moving images and thinks, oh, I want to watch that. What is that? And you're competing in a, in a media market right now where there is tons of information and that, that, that makes us be better when we're making content. Film and TV production is that. You need to get the basic level of understanding to be able to then fly away and take that content to new levels. And it's similar, you cannot sort of drive a car or you cannot start running if you haven't walked yet. And that is probably some of the, uh, a challenge that 
you know, a younger generation will always have, and I had that when I was much younger than I hope I still am, but um, it's trying to always remind ourselves that with the basic understanding and the basic skills, you're laying down a foundation that is going to let you grow and grow and grow endlessly. But you cannot start at the top without knowing those foundations. And you as parents, I'm sure you're telling these to your children all the time, but this is what TV and film production sort of is going to give students. My view right now is that TV is probably a platform that maybe in two years' time we're going to be talking about it as something of the past, like a Betamax or a VHS, seriously, because this is the way the industry is moving and it's really moving fast. And I know you guys want to talk about AI and I can we can touch on why that will impact TV as it is, as it exists right now. But... TV production gives people the foundation to be able to do digital video. And that is so important that you take away with you today. Uh, Vlad, you mentioned AI, and I think uh, it's a burning question. Yeah, I've, I've been trying to skirt it and uh, serve it last. <laughs> but uh, now, now we just need to, to, to lance the boil, as they say in English. So tell us more about AI. Our parents want to hear about AI. Mm. How does it ogre for their... Uh, the students or for, 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 for the people who they are, they, they are mentoring, their guardians, their parents. So I have AI and uh, I have my, my courses perhaps in motion graphic, in animation, in 3D. And uh, tomorrow I'm told, wait a minute, you read all this in college and uh, there's this wonderful application or uh, this wonderful uh, technology, algorithm, deep thought, deep learning, deep understanding that can really understand all this and, and give it out in a quicker, cheaper, and a faster way. And uh, that renders my investment in my education uh, irrelevant or obsolete, so to speak. So what, what, what is AI in, in view of our current scenario and in the courses, if, if, if you juxtapose it against the courses that we offer at ADMI? I think the I think the way to see AI right now is that imagine you have a you know a standard car which is the one that you use every day to go to work or to go and do your chores and then suddenly one day someone says here's a Ferrari drive it you still need to drive it it's a better vehicle but you still need to know how to drive it AI is exactly that AI it's a better vehicle in many ways that will allow people to sort of do things that they haven't been able to do before. But if you don't know how to drive, you're not going to, that's worthless. That Ferrari stays at home. So <clears throat> the second thing that I, I think is really important, I'm sorry, let me just say, keep talking about driving. Um, and in institutes like ADMI is where students are going to learn how to drive. The program is there and you can try and, and wing it and, and, and play with a, a few buttons here and there. But without that foundation of basic understanding of the digital market, that Ferrari is going to crash into a wall. Uh, it's not really not going to work. You really need to understand what, what are you doing with the vehicle itself. Um, and then the second thing that is really worth talking about AI is that AI right now, is an incredibly noisy concept that is everywhere. Everyone is talking about it, it's in the media, and it's being talked about as this thing that is happening or this thing that can help people cheat and, and, and do things you know, and copy what others are doing. And there's, there's a lot of noise uh, right now about AI. Sorry, the microphone did something. Um, there's a lot of noise about AI, but I, I, wanna, I wanna tell you that where, where I do think it is effective. It is, it is effective in a way that it can allow people to be more creative and be more powerful in the way they are applying the concepts there are. AI, you have to feed the software your ideas. And that is an important thing to distinguish. You're not gonna press a button and get something wonderful without you telling the software, what do you want? And I've seen at work, for instance, where people want to do new PowerPoint presentations and there are a whole lot of programs that can help you with that, but you have to feed the, the program with what is that PowerPoint? What are the colors? What is the content? What is the, the content of it? What is the text? And that is the kind of things that, that students need to learn is how to use to improve themselves these tools rather than see it as a shortcut. Because as everything in life and in the past, it has been the same. If you think of new advancements in technology as shortcuts, it's really not going to get anywhere to anyone. 
one day you will be found out and it will be something that you realize that you should have learned how to do in a different way. And then the final point about AI is that I get, for instance, sort of, a, I'm on several newsletters of AI applications. There are hundreds of different applications. Some of the, all of them are telling you, we are the best in the world. That's probably wrong, that you will find the really good ones are maybe 2%. And I've been trying a lot of them in, for the last sort of months. And, and you really see how some of them are good. Some of them are really, the majority of them are really not that good because they require either that you do more work than, than you thought you would have to do. They also, they also, the final product maybe is not that good. So there is a lot of filtering that also needs to be done in your, in your minds and, and, and in these discussions about AI as a concept is really not an easy win. It, it still requires to find out what the right software is. It still really requires for, for the human being to input what the software will deliver in the end. You say that uh, only 2% of AI is, is good and uh, it's out there. Most of these parents would be asking you a question and I'm asking on behalf of them. So what are the opportunities? Is it something that their children worth to pursue after ADMI or still in ADMI? Because you know, the opportunities all there, machine learning, uh, a lot of things that you could do at, uh, with, with AI. Is it something that they should give a thought? And that's a question that came up earlier. A hundred percent. I think we cannot ignore the fact that there is a technological advancement in our society in Kenya, in Tanzania, in the US and in Europe. Technology is moving fast. And in many areas of our world, uh, artificial intelligence is something that is developing and it's coming part of our lives. And by the time you sort of put your head up and realize, has it? It's already probably happened and it's probably happened much more than what you realize right now. Um, I think students should know about this as much as they can, but you have to have it, in my view, with a critical mind. This is not a shortcut. This is something that's happening around the world. And the more you know about it, the, bre the better prepared you are going to be able to sort of use this for your advantage. And if you look at it, not just, it's not a selfish perspective, but if you look at it from your own interest perspective, this is, connect this with my point earlier about being entrepreneurs. If you understand the AI market and you know how to do it, you will be able to create products that will allow you to be much more powerful in your own persona as an entrepreneur. And that is really important, but you need to have the skills and the understanding because you cannot tell the software to design some uh, a poster for you that you're going to sell to a company when you don't understand what the palette of colors, how the palette of colors works. So being knowing the foundations of graphics design will allow you to use the software in a better way. It, it's again, it's about driving the Ferrari. If you know how to drive, you'll drive the Ferrari. If you don't know how to drive, that Ferrari is not going anywhere. Thanks, Vlad. Uh, he's very much on the Ferrari. <laughs> Thanks. And now uh, there are two more questions and uh, we, we, we wrap it up. But to, to me, what is important also is uh, you, you need to let us know some or you, your views around self-employment because it's, it's a reality. And I'm sure you, you have had in the your, your past discourse, you've tried to broach on this subject. And uh, it's a reality that is facing us now. It's a reality that uh, uh, the policy makers, the poli policy controllers are, are trying to to thrust to, to, to the people. So tell me, what, what, tell our parents, what are your views and uh, understanding of self-employment and how does it uh, augur for the future? I don't think it's a future, I agree. I think it's, it's now. I think it's, it's understanding that the market is not formal employment. It's also you being your own, uh, in charge of your own decisions and being your own entrepreneur. And I think it's, it's a matter of a few things. It's being confident that you learn the skills and you can, you are now your brand. You are now your company and you can sell that as a skill. Some people make vehicles, Ferraris. Some people, transfer their own in intellect, their skills. Your son or daughter can be a great graphics designer and you can see that at home. This person has a talent, but this market is small for a person with talent. The market is the world, seriously. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a 
priest or a preacher or a pastor, but it seriously is a way to approach it. If you have a skill and you know that your children have a skill, think about it as the whole world. And the way that becomes, the way I can translate to you that in practical terms is, it's there are market spaces online where people can sign up and show their skills and wait for employment offers and create portfolios and, and showcase themselves. And that is something that not only gets seen in Kenya, it gets seen worldwide. And the more participation someone gets to showcase their talents in the broader market, the more chances there are. It's about showcasing what people can do and finding the right forums to do that. ADMI surely can help with the entrepreneur side of it. There is also an aspect that has been called professional polishes. What is the image that you're doing? That is incredibly important. It's if you know that, I don't know, if you know that a, a masala tea is going to be really tasty, but the packaging is terrible, you're never going to buy that. Even as tasty as it can be, you really have to be a loyal customer to buy that tea if you, because you know it. But if the packaging is what needs to, to really help that product be sold. And that is the professional polish side of things where you are also packaging the skills that your students have and making them sort of appealing to a wider market outside of Kenya as well. The internet is a huge place and it's about being in those forums where people as owners of their own companies can showcase what they can do. And that is a great opportunity to have in this day and age. Finally, I want you to just uh, talk about uh, the learning and pedagogy of, at, at ADMI. You've had a chance to, 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 to interact with our learning experience. Mm. And, and in view of the, the changes that are happening, you, you can just tell the parents something about that and also tie that to your experiences because you've also had opportunities to go to some of the best uh, uh, academic institutions in the world, like University of London. And, and uh, that makes you uh, uh, an authority in yourself because you, you can be able to, to advise whether what you're getting is up to standard. Thanks. So I like to sort of base opinions on, on, on proof and evidence. And during sort of the, the review that I've been looking at, I've been reading all the feedback or proactively sort of searching feedback from students who have left the institute and moved on to sort of new jobs or career paths. And it's incredible how the majority of them, and I think the last sort of uh, sample that I read was about 75% of the students were saying that what they learned was to be better in the area they were seeking. And that is really important because when you buy a bottle of water, you want that water to refresh you. And if the water doesn't refresh you, then you will never buy it again. And I thought that that was a really good example that people were saying that what they got is what it said on the tin of the class. You're going to get trained in being a better uh, performer in Adobe Illustrator, which is a software for graphics design. And people said, I became very good at it. And that's great. That's exactly what you want. The second thing, and I'm going to tie it in what we were talking about AI just now, is that... Um, it's interesting to see in the Institute how this conversation about AI is also happening and lecturers and managers and, and team leaders, everyone's sort of thinking more about it and it is creeping in into the decision making, into what are we going to offer? How do we need to adapt to reality? And I found that really assuring that it's not a, and it's not a debate that it's sort of happening outside of an Institute. This is digital media. This is an Institute that needs to be right on on the future, like spot on on what's happening in the market and aware of the trends. And it's really interesting to see how the debate about AI is permeating in every single level. So I think it's fair to say students will get what they're being taught. Well, students will get what they're being offered, which is, I mean, it's, it's obvious, but you really want that if you're going to pay for your students to come here. You really want them to get what they're being offered. And that's happening. And the second thing is that it's the, the Institute is on trend. It's looking at the current issues and discussing them internally in a very big way. Thank you very much, uh, Vlad. Uh, that was great. And I, finally, at the end of your talk, I've just figured out the linkage between the Ferrari and Arsenal. <laughs> it's the red color and number two. So finally, I figured out that. <laughs> Now, uh, I, wish to, I want to thank uh, Vlad a lot on a very serious note. He's uh, done a good job. Thanks and, uh, for, 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 for availing time, taking your time off a busy Saturday and after a very busy week to be with the ADMI. ADMI does not take that for granted. I think it's something we are very proud of. And also, on behalf of our parents, we say 
Asante sana. And we've heard you speak very good Swahili. Continue doing that. Asante Agri, Asante Nisana, Sikwenjama.